Hello and welcome back. Today we're taking a look at an 8-track cartridge player. Should be interesting. I've never taken one of these apart before, or fixed one, or even seen one. So I got this for parts, turns on, bad motor, $24.94, probably overpaid for it. You can tell this is pretty old because the, uh, the left audio is red, and the right audio is blue. So I'm going to try it out, see, uh, see if we can figure out what's wrong with it see if that diagnosis is correct. So I got it plugged into my amplifier and I had to get some 8-tracks to test it out with. And it doesn't sound right. Yeah, that definitely sounds really bad actually. I was hoping it didn't demolish my my tape and it looked fine. Yeah, trying it again, nothing's, nothing's changing. Moving that tape around. And it's even, it's vibrating so much, the amplifier is now, vib like, moving off of it. <laughs> so yeah, definitely something wrong with it. It sounds like the motor is bad, so that might be correct. And this switch definitely feels bad. It, that switch needs some work. So the brand is Electrophonic. I can't find anything about this brand. I think it's a Japanese brand, and I think... They were sold through Sears. I don't think it was a Sears brand. Uh, it wasn't owned by Sears, but I think that's where you would get this. It's kind of more of a discount, uh, kind of a product. I mean, it's it's a 1960s discount product, so it's still extremely well built. It's a it's a wood box with nice veneer, and the entire thing is made of metal. It it's incredibly nice, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, it's not working. So we got the case off so we can have a better look at what's going on. And it's not making that bad vibration anymore, but yeah, we can see the cartridge just, it's not fully seating. Something's holding it up. And it appears to be the switch. So it can't get past that switch. So I'm going to just try to remove it, but can't get to it because this big old flywheel's in the way. So I gotta remove this flywheel. So this is what the motor is connected to. It's it, this is an incredibly simple device inside. It's just a motor, the flywheel, and then the flywheel has a spindle coming off of it that drives the tape. Um, and I must say, enough praise cannot be said about this flywheel. It it earns the name of flywheel. This thing is a giant piece of cast metal. Listen to that, it just rings like a bell. Absolute beauty. So with out of the way though, I can now take off this uh, switch. And with that switch out of the way, look at that, it seats just fine. So that, that switch, uh, switch is, uh, is holding it up, so. Yeah, I forgot to put the <laughs> forgot to put the flywheel back in. It's pretty important to, to test it. And look at that. So it appears to be working perfectly fine. It just the cartridge can't seat, and that belt looks perfect as well. I don't know if that was recently replaced, but that's that belt is in fantastic condition. And I think the source of that vibration was this. Uh, there's no more grease or oil left in the bottom of that pivot. Uh, just dust and hair, which doesn't have a great coefficient of friction. So it, uh, I think it was causing it to, to bump around a bit. So I'm just going to remove this whole uh, bearing pillar thing, whatever you would call this. Uh, this this one screw does not want to move though. And it's because it's actually on a nut on the other side. Uh, and that nut's just holding down this uh, cable. Uh, Thing. So with that nut out of the way, the uh, screw comes up just fine. I get this out of the way. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go back to this switch. So if I put a cartridge in and I try to push this switch into where it wants to be, you can see those holes don't line up. So there's definitely something wrong there. So I, uh, I'll explain this better uh, in real time though. So as I hope I was able to demonstrate, the switch obviously does not fit here, but it's, I don't, 
I don't get that because the Switch looks fine. It looks original. It's a Japanese branded Switch, which this is a Japanese made device, so I, you know, I'd assume it would be the same country of origin. And the bracket doesn't look bent, it doesn't look incorrect, but the hole just doesn't line up. And if I did line it up, then the cartridge would not be able to fit. And that's what the problem was, is that when this was in its correct place, it would be bent further down, and then the cartridge just could not get past the switch. And it was causing the motor to run, uh, and I think there was no oil or there was no grease in the bottom of that uh, pulley and that was just causing it to rattle and grind and that's why I probably said bad motor on it because it sounded like the motor went bad but it's still it, it's just bizarre I don't understand how this happens and the only thing I can really think of to do is to just keep it like this put this push this down so that it's fully actuated and then just drill out the switch a little bit to make that hole fit better. Now, I don't know if that's a bad idea or not. I can't imagine that the switch is that tight inside that I'm going to break anything by expanding the size of this hole by like half a millimeter or whatever, but yeah, bizarre. I wonder if anyone else has ideas as to how this could happen. I mean, maybe, maybe a tracks have been changed at some point because I notice it's it kind of catches up on this, this, uh, raised piece of plastics maybe those weren't originally on eight tracks and they got added later for some reason but yeah i don't i don't know let me know if anyone has any ideas as to what went wrong here yeah so i'm just going ahead with the plan and holding the switch there and drilling out the the plastic that we could see uh, but that that really didn't work out it's it's still wasn't lining up well enough. I couldn't get the switch um, basically low enough to get the screw in without it running into the cartridge, even with the switch fully actuated. So I got a bigger drill bit. Um, but yeah, I vastly underestimated either how dull my drills are or how brittle this plastic was because it just started breaking. But I went full speed ahead anyways uh, and tried to drill it out a little more. Uh, yeah, just Yeah, just crumbling trying to do that though. Uh, but that still did not work. So I just drilled out the metal bracket at this point. And so with that drilled out now, the switch was able to be bolted down with it also in its kind of higher position. It just, this is such a weird issue. I don't understand how this happens. If that switch got replaced at some point with the wrong switch but yeah you can see the switch is actuating at, and it's also allowing the cartridge to enter and i boy howdy i mangled that up but i know the perfect solution to that and look at that it's like we weren't even there so coming back to this bearing pillar thing i'm gonna start just cleaning this out because uh it was pretty gross in there Anything that's getting in through that door, I guess, is just making its way down into this uh, cavity where the pulley will rest. And I'm also cleaning off this uh, flywheel. So that spindle is what the, the tape actually pushes up against. Uh, and it, this is what ends up driving that tape. So carefully put that back in uh, into its place. And I'm pretty sure this should have grease in it. Uh, that's what would make sense to me. I didn't have any good grease on me at the time, so I'm just using some oil temporarily. Uh, and then just putting a little bit on that spindle, spindle as well. I want to be careful as to not get it onto where that tape is going to go. And then while we're going crazy oiling stuff, I noticed in the motor, it says oil here, and there's a tiny hole next to it. So I figure that's where you put the oil. So I just put a little bit in, uh, and it kind of seeps down through that hole, uh, and then I just use a Q-tip to wipe out any of the extra. Uh, and yeah, that motor runs very smoothly. So now that we have kind of the mechanical problems fixed, I want to take a look at this switch, because it, it feels just terrible. And I get the front panel off and make it easier to clean. 
and start with these screws and this screw does not want to move at all so I got my little little ratchet to try to get more tension on it and it's just it's just camming out the Phillips head and it's possible I should be using a, a JIS uh, that Japanese standard of screw head because this is a Japanese device uh, and they fit a little better but I just ended up using a soldering iron to put a bunch of heat into it to try to break it loose and I put a lot in it. I held that soldering iron there for like a minute. The front of that plastic was pretty warm and even still oh goodness yeah I finally got it. I put a lot of force into that screw to get it to move. I have no idea how that got stuck it didn't look like there was any Loctite or stuff on it. And I fully expected the left screw to be like that too, but no, that came out perfectly fine. And then just two screws at the bottom to take the front panel off, and yeah, those as well came out just fine. So I have no idea why that screw just refused to move, but yeah, with that out of the way, I can get out the uh, the button, and yeah, this this switch is just hilariously rudimentary. Look at that. It's just a plastic plunger pushing against this metal spring that connects the, the circuit. And yeah, look what I did to that uh, plastic removing that screw. I don't know if it was like that or if I did that, but yeah, that did not want to move. And then this front uh, door was also bent in. I guess it's just from when you slam the cartridge in, you're pushing up against that. And I debated taking out this door and trying to straighten it, but yeah, I, I just decided against it. It, uh, I probably would have just destroyed it. So I'm just going to clean uh, the front panel while I got it removed. Now it really didn't look that dirty, um, but it, it actually was fairly dirty kind of difficult to get into those uh, little notches yeah look at that but as I was saying it's it's fairly difficult to get into those little notches uh, so I did end up using uh, like a flathead screwdriver I just wrapped some of this uh, towel around it and just went through all of those and scrubbed them and that's where most of the filth was it was just kind of caked in on there and then just wiping down this uh, front door and that cleaned up really nice this I really do like the look of this machine it's a uh, very distinctive from this uh, I think 1960s maybe 70s era but for the switch I don't I'm just putting some oil where that plastic on plastic meets to try to make it feel a little better uh, just so it's, it's more smooth and it doesn't it was kind of jamming up in on itself like you could you could make it stick in essentially but that oil definitely helped it feel a lot better. And then I did take some contact cleaner and I just blasted those uh, that metal strip with it. But with that out of the way, we can now start looking at the, the metal, or the, I should say, wooden box for this. It's It really is a nice wooden box. It's a real veneer. Yeah, it's made of plywood. It's just, it's, yeah, really solid feeling, so. Uh, and absolutely disgusting, I should add. It uh, needed a lot of scrubbing. So, but it's cleaning up nice. And then where the veneer is kind of shrinked off of it in these corners, I just, I got some of these furniture markers and I'm just trying that out. I got a walnut color. And I think it actually looks pretty nice. I think that was that was definitely worth it. It makes it a little less noticeable, that uh, white spot. And then I had a brilliant idea. It's like, what kind of wood renewal stuff do I have in my apartment? It's like, oh, I got this butcher block cleaner. Let's try it. And I know this isn't a butcher block, but the, the conditioner's got mineral oil and waxes. It's got everything wood craves. So I figured I'd try it out. See if I can make this look a little glossy, bring up the sheen a bit. And it actually worked really well. I was surprised by it. You can see the difference from where I put it on to where I, I did it on the left there. Uh, and I, I like that, that glossy look a lot more. Maybe people prefer that matte look, but I ended up just putting it on everything. And then these rubber feet, 
uh, weren't really grippy anymore. So I got this uh, rubber cleaner and restore. And I think this is more so intended for like rubber wheels within mechanical things, but I figured I might be able to work on these feet, just bring a bit of, a bit of stickiness back to them. And it, it worked pretty well. I, I put it on all of them. I don't even know what this stuff is. It just smells like straight acetone though. But yeah, it actually worked pretty well, bringing a bit of stickiness back. So we're on the home stretch now. This was uh, this was actually a really simple thing to repair. Um, it, it it's funny just how often it ends up being as simple as this stuff. Just that uh, switch being in the way. So I can start reassembling this. Get all those cables pulled through it, and then just slide the whole machine back into its uh, home spot. Yeah, something that stuck out to me too is the that metal grill the uh, transformer is it's just it's so nice it's such a thick metal for the, the mesh just to ventilate it on a, on something you will never see because it's on the bottom of the machine uh and then i also wanted to clean these uh, connectors because they were just filthy the the why i swear the wires on this stuff is the most disgusting part of it but that's it that's everything so We'll give it a test, and as always, I thank you for watching, and uh, have a nice day. Now I know a question some of you are probably thinking, how was I able to put my own music on one of these 8-tracks? Because surely I did not buy an 8-track recorder simply to film a video outro. Right? So this is a realistic 8-track stereo recorder. It, uh, it doesn't really work that well. I got it working well enough just to just to get some music on an 8-track, but otherwise it, it, it needs some work. So we will be probably seeing this sometime in the future. Probably not the very next video. Two 8-tracks in a row is it's kind of a lot, but we will be seeing this again. So as always, I thank you for watching, and have a nice day. Uh -huh.